I've been working in the area of health in different forms for all my career. Coming to Central Australia nine years ago, I was acutely aware that there's a real health issue here and while there's a lot of work being done on it, Aboriginal people are consistently telling me that they, they want access to good food. Their access to, to food from the land, bush food, has been uh, decimated by, by settling down in townships. Um, they're not getting access to, to fresh food through their stores. Um, and it's led me to really focus my energy on coming up with another option to grow f fresh food at home. I kept spotting these bright blue barrel planters popping up in all kinds of hot and dusty spots. Well, they really captured my attention and I'm back in town to find out who's behind these great little gardens. It's a system called wicking beds and the idea of a wicking bed is that there's a reservoir in the base of the, of the garden that can store water and progressively as the water's needed, it's, it's through capillary action pulled up through the soil. What are the advantages of the blue barrel planters in a climate such as Alice Springs? We haven't got a lot of rainfall, obviously, and the households that haven't had a chance to garden before, they need a garden that they can leave for a week at a time, and that's the goal with these beds. So, Freddie, whereabouts yeah. do you want to put the barrel? It's in the middle here. It's a good spot here. Right here. One strategy I've employed here is, is to work at the household level, um, providing the opportunity for people who've never had a chance to garden before to, to have some small gardens, to have some fruit trees and to see with, if they enjoy caring for those plants and then uh, to give them additional resources as they go. I've also been working at the schools which work in with those households so that the children can see gardens both at home and at school and can develop skills and understand how to work with plants uh, and how to prepare food from them. Well, I'm thrilled we've got this program because traditionally Aboriginal people have been hunters and gatherers. They haven't grown things. And I think it's wonderful that um, we're teaching them that they can grow these foods themselves. And the children have been completely engaged in this activity. It's been a very easy way to teach the importance of nutrition and what is healthy or otherwise. And I, I walked in the kitchen today and they all insisted I had to taste the foods that they were cooking and doing and they were just so thrilled to show them to me that it was just a delight. We have a tasty vegetarian treat, very delicate. And, and we made it out of our own hands. And we love the kitchen garden program. It's fun and learning us how to um, plant our own um, flowers and fruit and veggies. So then we can be healthy and strong. The enthusiasm of our older students, the year five, six and secondary who are involved in it, has become infectious throughout the school. The year three, fours have now got their own little garden outside their classroom. That, that's fantastic to see. It. What I've done so far to get the project going is, is put a garden at one site and then wait for requests from householders to uh, have a garden at their house. And uh, I'm getting quite high take up rates and I was expecting maybe 20% of the gardens would be successful a year later. I'm, I'm very happy to see that it's more like 60 or 70% of the, of the gardeners are, are really taking to, to working with their gardens. Um, and it's really a matter of finding those people that like getting out there with the hose, that they like watching the plant grow. And as well as the, the, the direct health benefits in terms of good nutrition, I think there's also a well-being output that, uh, that householders really enjoy caring for and, and looking after the, the plants.